Check, check. Check, check, two. Check, check, two. Check, check, two. Check, check, two.
Is it working? Yeah, okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Evelyn Sharber. Some of you, Alice Springs Mob, might know me as Bavardy. I'm the senior lecturer here for education and early childhood at Bachelor Institute, and I will be the MC for today's event. I would like to welcome you all to Bachelor Institute 2022 graduation ceremony here on our beautiful Desert People Centre campus in Alice Springs. Firstly, a bit of housekeeping. In the event of emergency or fire, please muster in the car park over here to my right. Men's toilets here on the right and women's toilets here just on the left, just outside this building. Should you require any assistance during today's proceedings, our first aid officers are outside in under the yellow tent. Um, for so you've got Amanda and Franca out there, so please put your hand up, at Amanda and Franca, so they can, people can see you. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. I would like to welcome Amelia Turner to the, to the stage to do Welcome for Country. What am I? I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go and other members of the parliament is here today, and all our other guests. First of all, I'd like to respect the elders past and present, and remember you and Banda country, Aranda country, Aranda Mavagan, and also I'd like to welcome those indigenous um, brothers and all the First Day Islanders. As you know, it's always be and will be Aboriginal land, be a colour. Thank you, Amelia. On behalf of the Institute Council, I would like to acknowledge the attendance of Kumali Riley and the Tinkerby Dancers, our esteemed elder, Veronica Dobson, Mr. Peter Renahan, CEO of our partner CFAT, Centre for Appropriate Technology. Mr. Jimmy Cocking, CEO of Desert Knowledge Australia, here on the precinct. Representatives from the Central Land Council here today. Um, rep uh, we've also got representatives on our council, our industry partners, Donna, Ms. Don Archie and Ms. Karen Weston from the Education Department. We'd also like to welcome Reuben Bolt, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, First Nations Leadership, Shiship from CDU. Jay, Work, Jay Walker, Associate Vice Chancellor of Central Australia from CDU. And our dear friend Jody Summers, who's ex DPC and now works for CDU. Um, there's others here I have to remember. We have um, Farron Peckham from Central Land Council. Um, William Tillmouth, who is going to be our guest speaker here today from Children's Ground. Leona Sheedy from Children's Ground. And there's a whole list of people from, students from Children's Ground, so I welcome you all for today's special event.
Today's open, uh, to open today's proceedings, the Institute Council and staff would like to recognise all of those who have lost, we have lost this year. It has been a hard year for us down here and across the Northern Territory with the passing of elders and a number of our students. In honour of all those that have left us, left us, please join with us by observing one minute silence. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Ms Pat Anderson, OA, the Chair of Bachelor Institute Council, to address all graduates. Thank you, Pat. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'd like to say good afternoon to every, all of you here, distinguished guests, uh, guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, graduates, families, friends, families and colleagues. All of bachelor graduations are joyous occasions, so it's always a privilege to be present at yet another one. Um, my, I'm, my name's Pat Anderson and I'm Aliara, come from this country out here, and I'm honoured to be the uh, council chair of Bachelor Institute. I'm delighted to join you all today on this special occasion to celebrate the fantastic achievements of our graduates who will contribute, con contribute greatly to our communities and families and continue to inspire future generations. Bachelor Institute is Australia's oldest First Nations tertiary education provider of training and research for First Nations peoples. And I want to thank you all uh, for choosing Bachelor Bachelor Institute to undertake your studies, further your education, and gain new skills to advance your careers and your families and communities. I encourage you all to continue to pursue your aspirations in further training or study so that you may advance your careers and gain new skills to contribute to and care for your families and communities. Graduates, value your education and your achievements that you will, ce that you will celebrate at the ceremony. They are special, and you and your family should be very proud. We are all proud of you too. Your decision to complete tertiary education will inspire younger generations to follow in your footsteps, and I encourage you all to instill a love of learning among your peers. The Council of Bachelor Institute is proud of the work which it has done and achieved over these past 40 years. <clears throat> Council, including myself, understand the needs of our students because we too are Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander people. We know the difference between studying at Bachelor Institute compared to a mainstream institution or a TAFE, college or university. When you become a student at Bachelor Institute, you have the support of your mob around you, which is important for your well-being when you're away from your community and your families. The success of our students is fostered by our tremendous staff who I want to acknowledge and thank. Each and every staff member plays an important role and, con and contribution to our students' success and their future beyond Bachelor Institute. We know from experience that our graduates become role models and inspire friends and relatives to further their education as well. Some of the courses that some of you have completed include, and there's only a short list, Diploma of Early Childhood Education and Care, Diploma of Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander Primary Health Care Practice, Certificate 4 in Education Support, Certificate 3 in Conservation and Ecosystem Management, 
Certificate 2 in Family Wellbeing, and Certificate 1 in Visual Arts, and as I say, there's, there, there are many more as well. Bachelor Institute is committed to offering culturally appropriate learning and training opportunities that connect and support students to real, jo real jobs in their communities. Graduates, when you graduate today, you're about to join the amazing, inspiring and formidable group of First Nations peoples who make up the Bachelor Institute alumni. Enjoy today's ceremony and this memorable experience as part of your educational journey. Once again, I congratulate you all on your grit, your resilience, your commitment and your success that has resulted in your achievements that will be recognised here today. Well done and again, thank you for choosing Bachelor. Thank you, Pat. I would now like to call upon our Chief Executive Officer for the Bachelor Institute, Mr Leon Yateman, to welcome all the graduates. Leon. Thanks, Evelyn. I'll start by paying my respects to the custodians of the land on which we are gathered here today, the Arunda people. I'd like to acknowledge their elders past present and emerging, and pay tribute to their resilience as a people. I also acknowledge the elder academic who's not with us today, Ani Sue Stanton, and her role in Bachelor. I want to acknowledge our dedicated staff who've done fantastic work over the last few days making this happen, but in the planning preceding. And I really want to pay acknowledgement to our students here today who we celebrate on this, their occasion. Today, our graduates will join our alumni. They have shown courage and commitment in gaining their tertiary education. At this ceremony, we recognise their goals to improve their education, to further their knowledge, meet new friends, and become beacons of hope for not only themselves, but their families and those aspiring students within the communities that they uh, originate. Students, we are proud to stand with you today as you receive recognition for your efforts in front of your, your friends, your peers, your family and your fellow graduates. I'm sure there have been times in your study journey when you've wanted to give up, but you didn't. You demonstrated resilience in, in the face of your challenges which alone will help you navigate your path through life. It will also help you to take on challenges you might not have been recognised yet. As a bachelor graduate, you have become a role model. You will have younger people look, look to you and seek your guidance. Your friends will see you through a new lens of admiration, and you might reach out to support them in their efforts to create their own pathways. For many, this celebratory day will not signal the end of study, but the start of your lifelong journey. We have many courses that create a pathway to employment and higher education, so we look forward to welcoming you back when you are ready to take the next step. We are very proud of you and look forward to seeing your legacy continue. And you create as Bachelors Institute's graduate for 2022. Thank you.
Thank you, Leon. I would now like to call upon the, the keynote speaker for today's ceremony, Mr. William Tillmouth. William Tillmouth is a local Aranda man born and bred on this country. He was taken away from his family and sent to Croker Island with other members of his family and many other children from Alice Springs. William's journey has held many leadership positions and inspired countless others along the way. He is a leader in our community and I am proud to call him my brother, William. Yeah, thanks. I don't know whether um, Ms. MK here to... Ah, right there, right there. I'll put it on one Respect, respect. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Mora, that's, I like that. And thank you for your warm introduction, um, Evelyn. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate all the graduating students here today. It makes me so proud to see people achieving great things through their studies, and I wish you all the best in your future endeavours. No matter what choice you make, or whether it's through employment or further studies, that depends on what you want to do. When you boil it down, education is a tool of survival. No matter where you live or what your history has been, education ensures that you survive in that world. And I don't say that flippantly because if you live in the desert or the top end, if you're not educated on that land, you won't survive. If you're not educated from the elders or the traditional owners of that land, you won't survive. So they get yourself educated if you ever endeavour to do that. Western education is the same. Whilst education can be seen as assimilating with the modern world, it is two worlds that we as First Nations people have to live in. You have, a, have more chance of surviving and thriving with an education to grow from. But always remember that your culture is your identity. Your education will create opportunities, but it, it does not define who you are. Remember that First Nations people as First Nations people, our laws, our knowledge, our systems must always be upheld. Your identity comes from your people, from the land, from the laws, the knowledge of our people. We must continue to hold this through future generations. This is what our elders have always fought for. This is our cultural professor, M.K. Turner, OA Order of Australia, who is here today, has dedicated her life to. I myself studied at the Aboriginal Community College in Adelaide in the early 70s. I knew John Ingram from there, and I was a, who was appointed the principal of Batcher College in 1985 and as the director of, of until Bachelor College became the independent tertiary education it is today. I, I have been a life learner. I encourage each and every one of you to follow the ways of living that our old people taught us. Never stop learning. Someone who never stops learning and teaching is my nana there who is here today to receive an honorary doctorate. Today she is being recognised for her knowledge and, and the work teaching others. She has shared her deep knowledge 
of her, our culture to so many people. She is published. She is a published author. She is an interpreter. She is our eminent cultural knowledge holder. She is a law woman. She is respected by both nations and non uh, by First Nations and non First Nations people. We have known MK as a, to be a professor for many, many years. She hasn't needed a piece of paper to be recognised and respected throughout her community. Through Aboriginal law, we respect her cultural authority as an elder and we respect her knowledge. We are grateful that she has supported so many of us to understand and know our culture. Being aware, being awarded a doctorate gives her the rightful recognition in a Western world. I, I would like to congrat congratulate you again on your achievements and thank you. And thank those of you here at Bachelor who have decided to give her this distinction, a distinction that is long overdue. MK is so important to many of us. She has given us strength in our culture. While I am an Arunda man born in Arunda country, I was taken away from my family at the age of five and sent to Croker Island Mission with two of my brothers and my other siblings were sent south to Adelaide. Croker Island was a forced assimilation school, part of the assimilation policy at the time. And assimilation means in terms, in practical terms, that is the, in the course of time it is expected that all persons of Aboriginal blood and mixed Aboriginal blood in Australia will live like white Australians do, and that was the official policy. I endured this through, endured that this without language, identity, family, country, for 10 years. And when we moved out in 1967 to Darwin, we were left wondering who we were, where did we belong, who was our family, where is my family. I was left in Darwin and I was in trouble. But one day I ran into a woman who told me that she was my auntie and she told me who my family were and where I was from. She said, you must go home. And I travelled south to Alice Springs. In the long road, mind you. Jesus Christ. <coughs> I have the ability to prioritise solutions by... Ah, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm not used to paper, I'm telling you. Um, I did end up back in my country, and over time I was reconnected with my family. Yet I can't speak my language as fluently as I would like. In Adelaide, I enrolled in the Aboriginal College. This is where I, um, um, where I got education. Education gave me the confidence to take on mainstream. It also taught me a lot about managing my emotions and a lot about containing the anger that had grown inside me. It empowered me. It gave me, got me off the recidivism conveyor belt of, institutional, of institutions. I moved back to Alice Springs over time and went on to work for various organisations, Tanganyira, I was on the board of ATSIC for three years, I was also the chairman of Congress and, I was the, and, and also at Tanganyira as I said. Today I am the founding chair of Children's Grant on Bakalala. I was the chair, uh, but MK is our elders who, who are the authority through our law as our Aboriginal people. Children's Ground is committed to a system of a reform approach. We are taking all the learnings from the past, from what our elders have said, all their lives, and we are backing Aboriginal people's ideas and leadership to achieve an approach that puts children at the centre of the story, to ensure that children grow up, grow up in the best possible way of the, uh, 
the best and the very best of their culture, a foundation of strength grows from knowing who you are, who your family are, where you where is your country, and knowing your language. Combined with the very best of Western learning and the outcomes of, for these children from the for into the future will be uh, be very different to those as we first. Nations are seeking for our families today. Nana Day is a key elder who sets our standards. With other elders, she sets the strategy and the vision for First Nations led community, school in community, and in homelands. Children are, lear children are learning alongside their families on country and in language. Their families are teaching them and teaching learning at the same time. Some of the adults are learning how to read and write in Aranda for the first time because despite knowing their language, they have not had the privilege of going to school where their first language is celebrated and taught. This is lifelong learning in action. Working alongside Western trained educators, these children are getting the best of both worlds. In years to come, we want all Western-trained educators to be First Nations people. Maybe that could include some of you are who are graduating here today or those who will graduate in the future. We have the ability to work in this way because we sit outside of government. We are supported through philanthropic means Government's, government investment is only 40% of our total funding. Working with phil philanthropy, we have the ability to move with the fluidity of the way people think. We have been able to honour the oldest education system in the world, which is ours as a First Nations people. Back to paperwork. My God. I need to talk to you, Mel, later. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Um, we have the ability to prioritise the solutions and put forward that are put forward by our families involved in leading, delivering and participating in children's ground. I never, ever wanted to see children grow up the way I did because although I seem like a success in the Western world, Assimilation policies took my very essence away from me. I was and all members of the stolen generation were denied our culture, denied our country, denied our family, denied our language and denied our identity. We have all grown up asking where we belong, who are we and where do we come from. Education gave me the escape. I no longer have to trivialise or minimise myself in order to fit in. But remember this, a piece of paper in the Western learning is just part of the education of our First Nations people uh, have the right to. I started to talk this talk saying education is about survival. I often say to people, every hour you spend in jail is an hour of your life you will never get back you will have given it away for free. The opposite goes for education. Every hour you spend learning, culturally and in the Western system, is an hour that you are giving to living, to learning, and to succeeding and helping others to succeed through choice and having agency in their lives and a voice in their lives. Good luck and well done. Thank you. I'll go this way. Yeah, Go that way. Thank you, William. I'd now like to call 
upon the Acting Executive Dean of Higher Education and Research, Dr Catherine Gilby, to introduce Ms MK Turner AM, who today will be receiving the Doctor of the Institute Honoris Causa. Catherine. There we go. And I want my words to be marked in the future. So forever, as I talk about Annie MK, and as I talk about you students, this marks a moment in time that will be looked back on forever. My name's Catherine Gilby. I'm extremely grateful to be able to walk and talk and earn my livelihood on the lands of the Central Orinda. And I'm really grateful to be able to be welcomed to do that. Today is all about you students. It's about your hard work, your commitment, your dedication to success, your actual success. We're so proud of you. We see you. Because when everything was happening around you, you dug in, you stuck it out, and your success here now is on you. And the fact that you chose to do it at Bachelor means the world to us. We, the, everything that we do, we do for you. I'm pretty proud of Bachelor because at this moment we're actually going to start to acknowledge one of our Bush professors as a, you know, the Bush knowledge as a, as a Western professor. So I have this big long speech written out but I'm not going to do it because it's hot and we're all sweating. Um, but I am going to ask you to read the citation that is going to accompany this and it outlines on MK's work. In 1997 she got the Order of Australia medal. She is like the, she, she was in the cultural leader for In My Blood It Runs. Irika Lange she set up. Achillera she set up. Children's Ground she's influential. I would go so far as to say there's not a single person in this town, Aboriginal or non-Aboriginal, that hasn't been guided and touched by her gentle leadership. I'm going to tell a quick story and then... so All of this is written down. You can read this. But I'm just going to... I used to invite... Because we're talking about hard work and we're talking about dedication and we're talking about commitment and we're talking about success. That's what we're here to celebrate. And the person that I think of when I say those four words, is Margaret Mary Kamara Turner, Ani MK. I used to invite her to talk about the process of writing her book to our masterclass where all the postgraduate students come because it's an incredible journey. It took years and years and years and it shows and it epitomises dedication and commitment. And one time when I was there, I was rushing around being so important, thinking that I was, you know, trying to do everything. And she stopped me. And she said, and we started to do like this little bit of a genealogy. And I was like, is now the time? And she was like, no, stop. And then she switched to our Yawada. And she stopped. And I was like, Imba, I don't know. And she was like, insistent. She didn't let me leave. She didn't let me leave that conversation until I responded appropriately. But what she did is she didn't let me leave until I was listening properly because she knew that I wasn't listening. She knew that I was running around trying to organise classes for other people when actually it was me that needed the lesson. And this is how her gentle... When I say she's an outstanding educator, this is how she does it. She just knew what I needed and she wouldn't let me leave until I'd gotten there. And this is how education in this context works. The truth is... We could offer you five PhDs and it wouldn't touch on your knowledge base. The truth is you are expansive. Like I said, I don't think that there's a person in, in this town who isn't touched by your wisdom, your leadership. I'm gonna, the one thing I am going to read out, so I said, Madam Chair, Bachelor Institute confers the award of Honoris Doctorate 
to Dr. Margaret Mary Kamara Turner in recognition of a lifelong commitment to cultural maintenance and languages of Aboriginal people as an author, outstanding educator and advocate. Her leadership and knowledge in healing and community controlled organisations and intergenerational knowledge sharing. We recognise her knowledge, her power and her urgent truth telling. Please join me in inviting, doc I'm going to come and get you, Dr. MK Turner to the stage to receive her award from Bachelor Institute Chair. Please, everybody, put your hands together for Dr. MK Turner. Get up.
Now that's mine. Number three, please, folks. Kali, hey Kali, thank you, everyone. Ila dalo pa jan na arigga. Gratify dalo yan na lang, and also honor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. And everyone here, I'd like to grat every one of you. Thank you so much, young and old. But one kamaba. And people are teaching my little mama, and under the encouragement of Allah, congratulate each one of you, and all the ones who are doing the programs and students with all your outfits look wonderful, and it's a good, good, good turnout. And I'd like to thank every one of you, all your young students. Yeah, be honor and a great thing for us today, for everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Catherine, Pat, and Dr. M.K. Turner. <laughs> okay, now I'd like to call upon the Acting Director of Operations, VET, Mr. Robert Buttery, to present candidates to the Bachelor Institute's Chair of Council for the conferral of the Bachelor Institute VET Awards. Thank you, Rob and Miss Anderson. You stand up a little bit further. No, you just go up. Rob, you're there. Thank you. How do we top that? We can't. Dr. Turner? Congratulations, well done, I'd like to. So glad we could acknowledge your efforts. But for all the other graduates, it's something to aspire to, isn't it? So I encourage you, like everyone else, keep your learning going in both, both paths. Chair, I have the privilege to present to you the VET graduates for this year. For the Diploma of Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander Primary Healthcare Practice, I present to you Rhonda O'Keefe. Chair, I'd like to present the recipient of the Diploma of Early Childhood Education and Care, Renee, Renee Brooks.
Rowena Forby. And Saba Imran. <laughs> Chair, I'd like to present this, the graduate for the Certificate for in construct, uh, Conservation and Ecosystem Management, Sonia Braben. Chair, I'd like to present the recipient of the Certificate for in Education Support, Marlene Coons. Chair, I'd like to present the recipient of Certificate 3 in Civil Construction Planned Operations, Zane Liebring. Chair, I'd like to present the recipient of Certificate 3 in Conservation and Ecosystem Management, Emron Gray Campbell. Morris Campbell. <laughs> Keith Gorry. Kelvin Cop. <laughs> Anton McMillan. Joe Palmer. <laughs> Angela Cara Purvis.
and Helen Wilson. Chair, I'd like to present the graduates for the Certificate 3 in Early Childhood Education and Care. Rajwinda Kaur. and Max Devi Middleton. Chair, I'd like to present the recipients of the Certificate 2 in Conservation and Ecosystem Management. Colin Billy Joseph. and Zia Xantus Vinicum. <laughs> Chair, I'd like to present the recipient of the Certificate 2 in Family Wellbeing, Ian Gordon. Chair, I'd like to present the recipient of the certificate one in workforce skills and uh, workplace skills, correction, Cody Bob. Thank you, Pat and Rob. Chair of the Council and members, the ceremony is almost complete, but it is also important to remember people that this graduation celebrates these being the graduates. Chair of Council, on behalf of the students who have graduated here today, the student response this year will be provided by Ms Rhonda O'Keefe, who received her Diploma of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Healthcare Practice in today's ceremony. I call upon Rhonda to give the student response. Hello, everyone. First of all, I would like to acknowledge and show respect to the traditional owner of this land, past, present and future. My name is Rhonda and I'm a proud Wambai Gurangi woman. I was born in Tenon Creek and grew up on a cattle station, which is Alexandria Down Station, 500 kilometres west of Tenon Creek. My schooling started on a station about age five years old. When I was 12, I went to boarding school in Alice Spring at Duara College in 1985. 
I finished school at year 10. Since I left school, I went home to Burnett Downs and worked part-time in a manager's home, doing cleaning and laundry work. And since then, I went on to do a tutoring program, which was located in Canyon Creek in 1993. So I had to move from homeland into a new environment. Moving into a town was something that I had to experience because I'm a bush girl. So I have been tutoring for almost six months. I have been moving around a lot to find work and got a job in a nursing home in Tonan Creek in Puka Pukatari. Worked for almost eight years there. And in 2013, I went on to study the Aboriginal Health Practitioner. Once I got my qualification in 2010 as an Aboriginal Health Practitioner, I was very pleased with it. I have been studying nursing in the last few years, which I am yet to complete. It's been very difficult for me to study, but I have been encouraged by my cardiac team to try and hopefully finish the nursing study soon. Studying is not always so easy, but there is help on the way, which I had. I was determined to reach my goals. Finally, I would like to acknowledge all the students graduating here today and congratulate you all on your achievements. Bachelor has allowed us to be qualified and be leaders in our community. Thank you. Okay, we're now at the end of our graduation ceremony here today. I would like to thank you all for attending and sharing this wonderful occasion with us. And I would like everyone to, to join us for the cutting of the graduation cake um, just shortly after the ceremony. I would now like the Institute Council to lead the academic procession um, from this area. But prior to, before that happens, um, we've got the, I'd just like a word to the, the students. We've got a very short time to get photos with the photographer. So we're going to walk, as soon as we walk out of here, we're going to have a photo with the graduation cake and you're all around the graduation cake so we can cut the cake. One of you can cut the cake. So thank you. So now I'd like to call on the Institute Council to lead the academic procession from here. And thank you for all attending today. Thank you.